Gilmogote. Mr. Squeaky Clean. Could I have Deputy Joe Higgins, please? Would you please be seated, Deputy? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Tom Corley. Tom Corley. Tom Corley. Thank you. Tom Corley. Would you please allow the Deputy to speak? Thank you. Tisha. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Tisha. Tisha. Tisha, I want to raise. Michael Collins. Would you please allow Deputy. No, well, there is no need any encouragement. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Tisha, I want to raise a decision of your government which you may not blame Fianna Fáil for this time, despite their responsibility for the origins of the crisis. On Saturday last, your government abjectly capitulated to the European Central Bank when the Minister for Finance indicated in Poland that the full 3.5 billion euro gambled in Anglo-Irish banks by unsecured bondholders would now be paid. Only three months ago, the same minister made world headlines, repeat world headlines, when he said in Washington that you would burn the bondholders. Quote, we don't think the Irish taxpayer should redeem what has become speculative investment, the Minister for Finance. Six weeks from tomorrow, the first €1 billion Euro is to be paid to Anglo-Irish speculators. Now, will you explain why this breathtaking betrayal of the Irish people, that while you protect and reward these sharks in the financial markets, you are prepared to continue the disastrous policy of austerity hitting our people. So you are prepared to continue to savage the incomes of low and middle income workers, put a new household tax on, prepared to withdraw special needs to the extent that it is at the present time, and cutting fuel and electricity allowances from pensioners and the poorest. So no compunction in hitting ordinary people but you bottle it when it comes to the banking speculators. Now, Question, please. what is responsible for this change in policy? Why did you make promises that you won't live up to? Why did you raise expectations in this uh, particular way, um, uh, uh, Taoiseach, and then let them down? Taoiseach, in sporting terms, it would be like the heroic Stephen Cluxton on Sunday. After a brave run forward, instead of kicking his county into history, Thank you, had suddenly turned and booted the ball in the faces of his teammates and into his own goal. Except this time it's 3.5 billion euro Thank you, of the uh, funds of our people that should, instead of going to speculators, be going into investment and into services. Please explain. Thank you, Tisha. Well, if. Uh, if Stephen Cluxton were able to kick the ball 160 metres, then he's an even better person than, um, than even you give him credit for. Fair play to the Dubs for what they did. Um, what the government did commit to, what the government committed to, Deputy Higgins, was to make this situation more tolerable for the Irish people and for the Irish taxpayer. And the discussions that have taken place between government and particularly at, at Ministry for Finance level have brought about final decision uh, in regard to a number of matters about how that can be made more tolerable. And as you are aware, though you don't want to recognise it, uh, the, 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 um, the savings over, over the average life of seven and a half years as originally envisaged for the loans is of the order of about nine billion. And as you're also aware, that that's, that's the equivalent of about 5.7% of current forecasted level of GDP in 2011. The, um, the saving is made up of uh, 4.9 billion on the EFSM funding, 3.5 billion on the EFSF funding, and 0 0.57 billion in relation to the UK bilateral loans. And this is a very significant saving indeed. Now, the Minister for Finance spoke directly to uh, Mr. Trichet. He spoke to the commissioners. Uh, he spoke to uh, all of his colleagues, who. Um, who have regarded the decisions taken by Ireland and the position into which Ireland is moving as being very significant indeed, uh, given the difficulties that the Eurozone countries have. 
The, um, the real situation, which the Minister said he would reflect on, uh, comes from the, from the fact that when, when burden sharing of the kind you mention was referenced in the Greek case, uh, contagion began to spread immediately to other countries. Minister for Finance said he would reflect upon his discussions with Mr. Trichet. But he also made it clear that clearly there is another argument to be followed here in respect of the promissory note uh, signed on for uh, by the government, which committed uh, 30 billion over the next 10 years, uh, 3 billion per year. Obviously, uh, if a situation in respect of maturities and interest rates were to be applied there, there could be further significant savings uh, to the Irish uh, taxpayer and the Irish people. Uh, the Minister for Finance uh, has said clearly uh, that following his discussions with Mr Trichet uh, and with others, uh, that he will reflect upon this, uh, and this, these are matters to be negotiated and agreed. Thank you, Deputy uh, Taoiseach. Uh, you Deputy didn't answer the, 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 the question, Taoiseach. The Minister for Finance was very vocal in Washington that he would burn the Anglo gamblers. And according to the schedule that I have, the 3.5 billion is to be paid to them in the next seven or eight months, and a total of 21.5 billion to all the other bondholders in unsecured, unguaranteed bonds, for which the Irish people have no responsibility. Now, that is the issue that needs to be dealt with. Not using figures about how disastrously high interest rates, which should never have been put by so-called partners, are now being brought down. And it's quite incredible that the explanation the Minister gave, uh, uh, along with the e ECB, in the Minister's words, that uh, my words burning the bondholders, but th that idea didn't seem to be the way forward if you were trying to encourage the markets. And you speak of contagion, meaning that the sharks in the markets would then go to Italy and Spain and raise their interest rates. Thank so you're everybody. running, as the ECB is, in front of these unelected, unaccounted uh, um, players in the financial markets and sacrificing the livelihoods, Thank the jobs and the welfare of our people. Now, can I ask you, Taoiseach, have some bottle. There is no responsibility on an Irish government to repay these tens of billions. Stop it now. Put the money into public investment, into infrastructure, into creating the tens of thousands of jobs that our people need, and end this disastrous austerity policy. Thank you. Tisha, one minute. Well, the updated uh, NTMA estimates, uh, which reflect last week's announcements and decisions made by the Ministers for Finance, show that the EFS rate reduction is approximately 2.6% and the EFSM rate reduction is just under 3%, uh, 2.925 in fact. That means that under the EFSF, uh, the annual interest savings is 450 million, in the EFSM it's 650 million, and in respect of the bilaterals, it's uh, uh, approximately 100 million. That's about 1.2 uh, billion per year which would be valid if the 45 uh, billion were drawn down in total and for as long as the amount remains outstanding. The, uh, in addition, uh, the cost of the IMF loans will reduce as a result of recent and forthcoming increases in Ireland's IMF quota. The NTMA have calculated that the overall benefit of this interest rate reduction adds some uh, 1.9 billion. Some 30 million of this arises in 2012 and is included in the overall estimate of 900 million of interest savings for next year, which even you will admit are very substantial. So based on the above estimates for the changes to the EU and the IMF elements of the loans, the overall savings based on the initial lifetime of the programme, which will be extended, would be over 10 billion. Thank and for you. 2012, the changes in the EU and bilateral loans combined with the impact of the IMF quota changes amount to some, hundred, to some 900 million euro. The uh, average maturity of the loans will be extended. This has the effect, as was pointed out by Commissioner Wren on Friday last, of improving our debt sustainability and also of improving liquidity for Ireland. And finally, Minister Noonan pointed out that Ireland will get a prepaid margin of 600 million euro 
on the EFSF returned in 2016. So while it's important to note that this margin return is already factored into the interest savings figures once the programme is drawn down, it does give rise to an upfront 600 million capital receipt in 2016, which will also come directly Thank to the Exchequer. That uh, concludes uh, leaders' questions. We now move on to questions to Anthesia. Oral questions.